Hi guys, Chris here with the OnePlus 5. Now I didn't expect to be reviewing this one because I actually canceled my order, but long story short, I've got it now. They still sent it to me and I'm happy to review it. I feel that, yeah, okay, I will look at it. I've had a lot of requests to look at it. Now the reason I canceled was two things. Uh, one was because of all the day one reviews that came out that all the big YouTube channels got this phone a week or so before they've done all their reviews and that makes it very hard for little channels like mine to compete to get any views and that's what I didn't really want at the beginning. The other reason is to be honest I was quite disappointed the fact that uh, OnePlus decided to increase the price and play it safe. So they thought no let's not add a bezel-less bezel -less design, let's not do uh, dual loudspeakers, things like that. They thought no we'll keep with what was successful on the OnePlus 3 and the 3T which is good, you know, that's a good phone. I really did enjoy my time with the 3T. I thought it was a really good phone, very fast. I love the fact that it's almost like stock Android Oxygen OS, no bloatware. That was really good, so I enjoyed the phone. So we've got a tweet revised, really, version here. So they've, they've bumped the specs. Now I've got the Snapdragon 835, six gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of US UFS 2.1 storage. Anyway, enough talking on this. One, let's get it unboxed and check it out. So, fully sealed in the wrap here, dual camera, clearer photos. They're really pushing that, aren't they? So, they're really hyping up this camera, so I hope it's gonna be their best one yet, which I'm sure it will be, but I don't know whether it's gonna stand up against the competition, so I will find out later on. So very similar packaging to the earlier models, just like the 3T that I reviewed. So get the phone out if I can, pull that up. Have a look at what else we get. So inside here is just all your instruction leaflets. It should be the SIM tool as well in here. There it is, quick start guide. The rather large dash charger but this thing is the fastest at the moment that you'll find really that they claim that you can get about half well a full day's battery use out of just 30 minutes of charge which is really good and then a quality usb to type c cable there so first up i'll check out the weight 157 grams which is not bad at all so quite light and 7.45 millimeters thin, so very thin. So on the front, there's a new 16 megapixel front-facing camera, and next to that, the earpiece, of course, and 2.5D Gorilla Glass that's over the front of our 1080p optical AMOLED panel, so the same panel used in the 3T. Fingerprint reader module down the bottom, which also doubles as the home button, capacitive key there, and it does have a pre-applied screen protector. So this is what OnePlus has been fussing a lot about, claiming that it's a very good camera arrangement they've got on the back here. So you can see the LED flash, secondary microphone, and the first camera sensor will be that 20 megapixel one, which is a Sony IMX350 with an aperture of 2.6. Next to that, 16 megapixel autofocus sensor, and that's the IMX398 with an f1.7 aperture. So they've really opened that right out to let more light in. So hopefully that's gonna be good in low light. I will check that out, of course. Now you can see that little line there at the top. That, of course, is the NFC sensor. The antenna is right there at the top, and then those antenna lines you can see. So you can see here that the rear of the phone is slightly different now compared to the 3T because we've got of course that new dual camera module on there, the OnePlus logo still in the same position and slightly better rounded edges here. Now this does not feel any more slippery than your average phone so you don't need one of those skins on it that all those big YouTubers are cramming down our throats and pushing those douche brand skins everywhere. They sold their souls, but I haven't. So on the right side, we still have that switch, which I'm quite fond of. So you can quickly switch that into silent mode or just vibration only with the flick of a switch. So you've got those three different positions to control your different sound modes there, which is great. Just below that is the volume rocker made out of metal, has a good feel to it, and it does not 
rattle or anything like that. So no build quality issues. And on the right side is the power button and the dual SIM tray. And lastly on the bottom a 3.5mm headphone jack, microphone, Type-C port and just a single loudspeaker here. So I'm a little disappointed to see that OnePlus did not add a second loudspeaker or a front-facing loudspeaker, which would have been really good. Okay, so I'll just go through the setup here very quick. I've got no SIM card in here at the moment. And I won't worry about setting up wireless. We'll set up the fingerprint reader. Now the AMOLED panels always do this on camera. They are so hard to record. I don't know how the professionals do it, but you see you get in these kind of horizontal lines, that banding. That doesn't happen in person. It's only on camera. And apologies for that. Okay, so I will add a fingerprint. So first I need to just add a pin number. So I use my super secure pin that I always use. Okay, so let's set this up. I think it's about 10 times I need to do this. All right, done. Now I can add the same finger again to increase the accuracy, but that should be fine. Okay, all set. So that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too painful to go through that setup. And I'm just going to lock it now and see how quick that unlocks. Okay, you need to put the password in first time. That is normal. So lock it again. That is very quick. As expected. For a Snapdragon 835, that's almost instant. Look at that. Really good. Happy with that. So Play Store is on there, of course. Even though this is a Chinese mobile, it does have Play Store on there. Have a quick look at the settings. So Android 7.1.1. And this is the 64 gigabyte version that I mentioned. And Oxygen OS version 4.5 at the time of this video here. So bloatware. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So they put a lot of Google apps on there. But they haven't put any real OnePlus bloatware apps on there. The only one I can see, of course, is just that community app there. So this is a reason why I like their ROMs because they seem almost just like stock Android with just a few little tweaks and things. So I have connected up to the internet and it's advised me that there is a system update here already. So that's good to see that OnePlus are pushing out uh, bug fixes and this improves the compatibility of third-party apps, network Bluetooth, and the camera there, and system stability. So we just got that one loudspeaker down the bottom. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. So it's got some really good volume to it, which is great, but I can hear some distortion at 100% volume there. So with this background that they've used, the wallpaper, you can see just how great the screen looks there with those deep blacks you get on the AMOLED panels. Now the touch response seems really good to me, very quick. Uh, right now I've got the split screen running, and you see the scrolling, that's uh, my website there. That seems reasonably smooth. Not too bad, that's Chrome of course. And here you can select between different apps. Now if you touch, double tap the uh, recent apps button, you'll see how it will quickly swap between apps. So you can have, for example, your recent apps in here and your web browser at the top, which I've got now, and then just go along and swap between them, which is a nice little feature. So this is something that was new with Android 7. But so far the performance of the ROM Seems very smooth, very fluid, just like the 3T that I reviewed at the beginning of the year. Now I ran a quick test of Antutu Benchmark, and there's been a lot of controversy behind this because they have been discovered by XDA developers. There's quite a good um, article on this that they've been cheating in their benchmark. So it's basically detecting that you're running a benchmark and it's maxing out and holding those cores at full clock speeds a lot higher and a lot longer. So they're doing some sort of governor tweaks 
to try and cheat the scores there, which is probably why the 3T also got that really good score. But despite the benchmarks, real world use, it does feel really quite quick and snappy. I just wanted to point out, I'm feeling quite a bit of heat coming from this area here. So it'll be interesting to see when I game and push this mobile phone really hard, um, just how hot it's going to get. No doubt the Snapdragon um, 835 is probably located in this area and they've probably got some thermal adhesive or thermal pad or paste in there transferring the heat from the chipset onto the back maybe. So it feels like it's going to heat up a little bit there which is a slight concern. Hopefully it's not going to be too bad but I'll report back on that probably in the gaming review if I do one or in my full review. Now there's one thing here I can't believe is happening and that is USB on the go support doesn't seem to exist on this phone. I've tried plugging in all sorts of pen drives that work on other phones using my Type-C adapters and not one of them will work for me which is super disappointing. Hopefully this can be fixed via an update. So let's have a quick look now at the camera application. So to quick launch the camera, it's similar to the way the Samsung's work. Well, the Samsung's use the home button, double tap that. This one you double tap quickly the power button and you'll see we go straight into the camera. So to start with, we have the, the first sensor, the 16 megapixel sensor. You could call that the default sensor. And tapping here will give us the two times zoom one. Now, of course, I've got some bright lights on here at the moment, so the shutter rate is basically instantaneous there and you can see gallery performance that's all fine now we've got video modes of course but to get into the video mode you have to swipe up sorry swipe up on the main screen there it doesn't have just the same button from the the viewfinder which I would prefer to have the shutter and then the uh, camcorder all on the same screen but anyway that's just a minor thing all you gotta do is swipe up it's very quick not too bad now in the camera mode, you can use the second sensor, so the two times optical zoom one. Now you notice there's a little bit of shake here. That's my hands, I've got shaky hands, and also because of the fact that none of these sensors has any optical image stabilization, which for me is a real letdown. To have a flagship without that, I feel is a bit of a mistake. Now at the moment, I've got video set to 4K. It does have 1080p, 60 frames per second and then 720p, those are our options there, which are kind of standard. Now I have a look in this menu here, you've got different modes like the portrait mode, that's using both of the sensors, I believe, to give us those depth of field. So the blurred backgrounds, bokeh effect. And I'll just do a very quick sample here. This is software stitching between those two sensors is how it works. So take a quick photo. And you'll see now that the background's a little bit blurred there. Now, it apparently works best on people, so not objects like what I'm shooting at the moment there. Now, back into the camera mode, we'll have a look at a few of the options we get there. So, you can change the aspect ratio and all of that. This, of course, is to swap over to the front-facing camera and yeah, you've got the typical 16 by 9 so it's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio sensor high dynamic range is on automatically there so i'm going to go out now and take a few samples there's of course sorry pro mode too that i wanted to show you histogram reading there you can change the shutter rate white balance iso so lots of settings there we're able to tweak which is great so we'll go out and get a few samples now some shots from the rear and front facing cameras as well as video just to get an idea of what kind of quality we can come to expect from this new dual sensor arrangement we've got.
So I sample now with the 16 megapixel front facing camera, the new sensor they put on there. To me the quality looks excellent, I mean look at this, it's capturing me really well. Now the field of view isn't super wide or anything like that, so you have to hold it right back if you've got really long arms, or so you probably need one of those selfie sticks to help with that. Now looking at the background here, it's washing out the mountains, you can't see any details which is just over here, those mountains there, not capturing that at all, but it's at least capturing my face really well I mean you can see the lines in my face and everything so very detailed and it looks like it has a touch of digital stabilization as well to me it doesn't seem as shaky as the rear camera but overall I feel that the front-facing camera quality is really quite good so far so I'm recording now in 4k it's just warned me that I've only got 10 minutes maximum that's probably to stop it from overheating and there is no optical image stabilization here whatsoever. Now I can use the secondary sensor, which zooms right in. You can see there the finer details of the castle there. And just zooming out. So very disappointing to see there is no stabilization whatsoever. So no electronic used in 4K, which I believe is an error, but we do have it at least in 1080p. So let's have a look at a 1080p sample. Now this is 1080p, which should have electronic image stabilization. I think it's always on by default and you can't actually disable it. It's the uh, council building there of Denia. So I'm just going to walk over to my scooter. And I can see it shaking around a little bit. Just have a look at the two times zoom again, which is available to us also in 1080p mode there. Alright guys, so just to wrap up here, that it feels like a solid mobile. The build quality is excellent, definitely a flagship. The screen on it is very nice for a 1080p AMOLED display, those deep blacks, very responsive super smooth operating system as well great to see that an almost stock light experience no real bloatware on there apart from some of those extra google applications that they've put on the rom but besides that just going in and out of different applications multitasking going through recent apps split screen very smooth everything seems to perform really great now i know they've got a bit of controversy with the antutu scores benchmarks don't really worry me too much although I do like to show and run them, but just bear that in mind that they have cheated there a little bit with the benchmarks. But for me, that's not really too much of an issue if in real life use it performs well, which it does. Now the cameras do seem to have an improvement there, but I'm highly disappointed at the lack of any stabilization in 4K, which I believe is a huge error. They should have that. And then it comes to other things like, yes, it performs really well, it's got a great spec, but where are, for example, new things like uh, an extra loudspeaker, dual loudspeakers would be great. Why haven't they also decided to go with a different screen, perhaps reduce the top and bottom bezels or something slightly new? To me, this feels like a 3S, so the OnePlus 3S and not a 5, a true sequel, but okay. I've got to use it more, I've got to run more benchmarks, do some gaming on there. Now there's one era, area that I have a slight concern, and that is heat. It does seem to get very hot, even just doing things like Chrome, and I haven't run any games yet, any serious benchmarks or anything that's going to push it really hard, and it's getting very warm on the rear which is going to be interesting to see when I start to game on it, just how hot this thing will get. So I will be back probably in about one or two weeks, more like two weeks. I'm going to take my time with this one, just use it and see just how things go and come back with my full review and my overall final opinion here. But at this point, things are looking very good and I do like the phone so far.